Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This, my friends, is a fine example of one of Patek Philippe's rare handcrafts. In this case, adorning one of its world time watches. Look at the level of detail on that dial, the way the light plays off the various materials and textures, its opulence, its majesty, its craftsmanship. The map in the centre of the dial that embodies Phileas Fogg-esque international travel is grand faux cloisonné enamel with outlines of thin gold wire. It is delicate, ridiculously hard to achieve, and as a consequence, it is quite superb. You have to be invited to own one of these rare beasts, and Patek makes a tiny number each year, many in very limited visual collections. As a result, a handcraft's watch in any Patek collection is something to be revered and cherished. And this week on The Watch Guys, I'm going to show you this watch in detail and also explain what's involved in making such an exquisite timepiece. Now I appreciate that this watch and many of the ones that I'm going to show you today might not be your cup of tea. To be honest, 99.9% .9 of them aren't mine either. As rare and as intricate as Patek handcrafts may be, the designs are not always that attractive or commercial. And in some cases, you either accept the one you are offered, or you don't get one at all. You don't see handcrafts on display in authorised dealers, they never go into general population, and very often you will never even know that they exist. Wildlife is a common theme, as are landscapes and famous landmarks and elements of nature. The idea is to showcase the artistry and time-honoured techniques such as enamel painting, guilloche, jewellery and miniature wood marquetry. It's the skills required to make these pieces, the time it takes to create each individual dial and the rarity that means they are not cheap to buy, but even more expensive to buy on the second-hand market if they even come up at all. But first of all, let's do a wristwatch check, and under the black jumper this week is my Kodoki K2. Now this is an independent watch company founded by Stefan Kodoki in Germany, and it's part of his handwork collection. As you can see, it's a minimalist but extremely handsome watch, 39mm steel case, in-house, 24H movement, and with a 46-hour power reserve. I absolutely love the rotating hand-engraved sky disc, which is the day-night indicator, and I'll do an episode on this watch very soon. But this week, it's all about this and all of its brethren. This is a 2020 reference 5231J World Time, a classic looking Patek that perfectly combines the functionality of the World Time movement, in this case the self-winding 240HU, with an enamel and gold world map. It features a 38.5mm case in yellow gold with a sympathetic brown leather strap, it weighs 95 grams, and it's got a Christopher Columbus seafaring vibe thanks to the vivid colours and aged texture of the enamel. It's a little small for my usual tastes, but it is unique in the watch world. And you can't deny it isn't distinctive. This is the sort of thing that sets Patek collectors' hearts racing. The specific part of the world shown on the dial is different depending on whether you are offered it in Europe, the Middle East and America, or in Asia and Australasia. To create the continents on the dial of this watch, the artisan marks off all the outlines with a thin piece of gold wire, which you can just about see here. Then they fill the sections with different enamel colours to create the oceans and the land. All this is done within the high temperatures you find in a kiln, and at any point the colours may bleed, lose vibrancy, or the edges of the continents might fail. It's a hand-painted, painstaking, achingly frustrating process, taught over generations. It's not something that can be automated in a factory, and it is the essence of handmade horology, which is why the majority of watchmakers do not even attempt it. And it's why Patek Philippe has been doing it since 1839. 
Geneva was a centre for handcrafts in the 16th and 17th century due to French artisans, known as Huguenots, fleeing their home country for Switzerland to avoid religious persecution. Religious jewellery and iconography was banned, but clocks and pocket watches were not. And Patek Philippe, even when there was no direct demand for the work, still employed the artisans to work on projects that would allow them to maintain their dexterity and traditions. When I talk about rare handcrafts, I'm really talking about engraving, miniature painting on enamel, gem set watches, and marquetry, which involves working exclusively with wood. Let's have a look at a wide selection of rare handcrafts and materials, so that you can appreciate the level of artistry and skill in these pieces. You never know, it might spark your interest in owning a rare handcraft watch. First of all, enamelling, and I have to confess that apart from some big cats and flowers, the various enamelled birds, fish and animals tend to leave me a bit cold. Witness the 2013 McCall collection. Someone thought that parrots would be a good idea, and I respectfully disagree. And the same for finches. I like them in trees, not so much on watch dials. And let's not mention 2017's Le Danois Rousseau reference 5089G, which featured a surprised looking lion in a hedge. There's no majesty for this great beast here. He just looks bemused. But there are always exceptions, and you can't fail to be impressed with the detail and craftsmanship for this 2019 Clossian enamel overhand executed guilloche featuring three swallows in flight. Landscapes tend to work quite well in both enamel and miniature painting on enamel, such as these two from 2018, and this exquisite 5538G called Old Views of Geneva. Birds of prey made with marquetry are especially impressive and would obviously appeal to the Arabic market. And you can't help but love the 2013 Royal Tigers collection, four pieces that I think work well and are particularly suited to being created in wood. Marquetry landscapes can work well like this simple 5089G called Lac de Emosson, which is a reservoir in Switzerland. I have a love-hate relationship with engraving though. My rule is, engraved case backs and cases, yes. Actual dial designs, rarely. And animal engraved designs, definitely not. Yeah! And now it's time to enter unboxer vision. So let's have a look at the packaging and box for this rare handcrafts world timer. And here we are, the familiar cardboard outer case for Patek Philippe watches. And also, very familiar as well, the brown dust cover. In the secret compartment underneath, we have the leather folder. This is where we keep all of the important documentations for Patek Philippe watches. They're all identical, and as you open it up inside, you will find on the right hand side, we've got the full manual to the World Time Calibre, explaining exactly how it works and how to use the watch in many different languages. And also on the left hand side, we've got various manuals advertising Patek Philippe products, including the museum and also some books. But most importantly, we've got the Rare Handcrafts Certificate of Authenticity. So you get that with these exceptional watches. So you need that in the package. And also, of course, you get the standard Patek Philippe Certificate of Origin, which tells you all about the watch tells you about the caliber, tells you about which type of watch it is, and uh, all about the dial. Very important documents to have with any Patek Philippe, and really, the only different one for this watch is that extra certificate for the rare handcrafts. When it comes to this reference 5231J World Timer, which was launched at Baselworld in 2019, I'm a little conflicted. On the one hand, I appreciate the craftsmanship, Look, I'm appreciating it right now. But I have to confess, it's not one that I would have on my wrist that often. Perhaps it's because of the yellow gold, but actually it's more to do with the fact that it looks a little bit too classical for my personal tastes. I've always been more excited by the 5930G as seen here, but wouldn't you know it, it's been discontinued. This 5231J has also now been discontinued and replaced with this new white gold piece with accompanying blue leather strap. As you can see, it's far less traditional looking and a smart update from Patek in my opinion. But there can be no doubt that whatever handcrafts you do have, you've got something pretty special. 
It's also historic and exceedingly rare. And if you're a Patek collector, surely one of these needs to be in your collection. Thank you for watching this episode of The Watch Guys. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you like what I'm doing on this channel and you'd like to see it grow, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. And there'll be another episode next week.